In this second video on Edison, we'll be taking a look at some of the basic processing options found in the editor. Most of the basic and most used tools are found under the tool menu. This menu can be accessed in a variety of ways. The first, and perhaps most obvious, is the tools icon above the audio waveform display. They can also be accessed from the options menu located in the bottom left corner of Edison's interface. These tools offer a wide range of processing possibilities to enhance your audio. For the sake of this video, we are not going to dive into much depth on some of the most basic functions such as normalization and gain change, but take a look at some of the more unique functions in Edison. You may notice that from the tools menu, some of the options will not be available or grayed out. This often is a result from the current state of your audio files or edits. For example, I have not yet applied any envelopes to this audio file. The options under the envelope section are not available. Same goes for my channel section, as this is a mono file, the tools to perform basic channel operations are also not available. Let's take a look at some of the tools in the time section. The reverse function will flip the audio so that it plays the audio in reverse. The time stretcher and pitch shifter have a little more options to them that require user input. Under the options tab, you have a few controls to affect the process's output. Pitch coarse will allow you to adjust the pitch of the sample in semitones. Fine will allow you to fine tune the pitch in between semitones. The pitch multiplier allows you to adjust the pitch by simply multiplying the current pitch. The time structure option allows you to adjust the length of the audio without altering the pitch. To do this, you only need to adjust the multiplier, which will multiply the current length to the desired amount. The other option, which might be easier, is if you know the desired length in milliseconds, then you could just enter it here. By entering 1000 milliseconds into the length field, the audio file will be adjusted to one second long. The method drop down menu has a few different options of algorithms that are used when processing the audio. The insert option will determine if the audio loaded in Edison is replaced with the processed audio or simply paste the new audio on top of the already loaded audio. The scratch using envelopes feature attempts to recreate the scratching sounds that are created when DJs scratch LPs during their performance. To show how this works, I'm going to take a quick look at envelopes. To recreate the scratch, you'll need to actually create a path which will act as the movements a DJ would make on the LP. And to create this path, you use envelopes. To edit this envelope, click on the All Purpose Envelope button in the bottom left corner. By default, the envelope will have two edible points. When the envelope moves in a straight line from its bottom left corner to the top right corner, then no effect will be produced. To add an edit point, right click on the envelope where you want the start of the scratch to take place. Also add an end point for the scratch. Adjust the envelope's curve in between the two points with a tension handle. Pulling the curve downwards will create a pulling back effect of the scratch, while an upwards curve will give you the pushing forward effect. After drawing your curve, select Scratch using an envelope to process the effect. Have a cup of coffee. It's already been soft. Blowed. The Acquire Noise function will analyze your audio file and determine what it thinks is your noise floor. To see the results of this function, you must enable the Noise Threshold view from the bottom right corner. This will highlight the noise floor in green. Edison comes built in with a simple and easy to use convolution reverb. This type of reverb works differently than traditional reverb plugins or effects you may have used. Convolution reverbs work by using other audio samples to calculate the reverb effect. Edison comes with a few excellent audio files that can be used. For simple use of reverb, just load up the audio sample, adjust the wet and dry selections, and click Accept. When the Add Tail option is selected, Edison will automatically adjust its length to give room for the tail end of the reverb. Have a cup of coffee. It's already been sausage and blood. A little more advanced use of this reverb 
allows you to build pan and volume envelope filters right on top of the reverb view. Have a cup of coffee. It's already been saucered in blood. The audio blur effect is definitely a unique effect. It works much in the same manner as the convolution reverb by adding impulses of noise to the audio which are then multiplied with the source which can create a natural smearing sound. The multiplier is not consistent and is altered by the envelope shape. Edison comes with one of the most intuitive equalizers in recent times. The EQ does not work by traditional means. There are no adjustable bands per se. The EQ does, however, operate with envelopes which will allow you to increase or decrease certain frequency ranges in your audio, as well as you can add as many points to the envelope as you wish. It gives you an incredible amount of flexibility. Have a cup of coffee. It's already been saucered and blowed. When you record into Edison, or from time to time open an audio file into Edison, you may not have slice point markers on your file. These slice point markers make it easier for Edison to estimate the tempo of your loop. Adding these slices can be done manually since they are only markers. However, an easier way would be to use the auto slicing option. <laughs> 